Today we will discuss the specimen collection, transport, and storage guidelines. So as we know that the, in the different infections, we require the different specimen and there are different conditions for their transportations and the different storage guidelines. So first infectious disease that is endocarditis, it requires the blood culture. What will be the methods for its collection? We collect the three sets for aerobic and anaerobic from different venipuncture sites after three minutes apart. Means you uh, will collect the first set and then after 30 minutes you will collect the second and after 30 minutes you will collect the third one. So transport immediately at room temperature, don't refrigerate. Second is the in the meningitis. Sample will be the CSF cerebro spinal fluid. So what will be the method for its collection? That will be the lumbar puncture aseptically. Collect 1 to 2 ml in a sterile tube. So immediately at body temperature, you have to transport it and don't refrigerate it. Next, sepsis. In the sepsis, we require the blood for its culture and same for endocarditis uh, as we collect the three sets and but keep remember we will collect the blood samples before uh, taking the antibiotics before starting the uh, antibiotics we have to collect the samples of the patient so that will be immediately you have to transport it at the room temperature in the uti urinary tract infections we require the urine so urine uh, can be midstream, catheter, and the supra uh, pubic. Midstream clean area collect midstream urine. So during the uh, at the mid of the urination, you will collect the samples of the urine. That is the most important. Catheterized patient aspirate urine from the catheter part. So that is again the uh, how we will collect the urine from the different categories of the patient. Supra pubic collected by trained personals. So this is how we can collect the urine from the three different types of the patient. Transport within two hours if delay. Refrigerate at two to eight degrees Celsius. So uh, you have to transport it within two hours. But if it delay, you have you can refrigerate it two to eight. But uh, that will be within. 24 hours. Pneumonia, you can collect the sputum, endotracheal aspirate and the BAL. So sputum, early morning deep cuff samples will be taken for the pneumonia and BAL endotracheal collected by the trained personnel. So that is will be the aspirate will be taken by the uh, trained personnel. Transport immediately at room temperature if delayed. So you can also refrigerate it 2 to 8 degrees Celsius as for the urine. Gastroenteritis. We will take the sample of the stool rectal swab. Collect fresh stool in a sterile containers. And use rectal swab if stool is unavailable. So there is a second condition if the stool is fresh stool is not available. Transport within 2 hours. Store at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius for bacteria, freeze at 20 degrees Celsius for viruses. So for the detections of the bacteria and the viruses, you have you will see the different conditions. Vaginitis and cervicitis, vaginal and the cervix swab. Use a sterile swab, avoid normal flora contaminations because at in the vagina you will see the lot of normal flora. Transport in amides or start medium at room temperature. That is the good condition for vaginitis. Abscess and deep seated infections like pus, aspirate, and the tissue biopsy. Three options, you can collect the pus, aspirate. Pus collected by syringe or swab. This is the first condition, aspirate. Aseptic technique with the needle or syringe. You can take the uh, fluid from that side and you can also take the biopsy place in a sterile container with saline transport immediately at room temperature if delay refrigerate at 2 to 8 degrees celsius burns what will be the samples for the burns patient you can take the swab you can take the biopsy and you can also take the aspirates uh, um, that leak from that from the wound 
at that site, swab moistened with sterile saline. Biopsy and aspirate preferred for deep infections, transport immediately at room temperature. So now we will see what will be the acceptance and the rejection criteria for the sample. First, proper labeled with patient details like name, date, time, and specimen type should be written. That is the acceptance criteria. Collected in sterile leaked proof containers. Containers should be sterile, decontaminated. Sufficient quantity for testing. If the sample is low, then there will be a lot of difficulties in performing the laboratory test. Transport within recommended time and collect a correct temperature is very much important. Non-hemolyzed and non-clotted specimen if you are dealing specifically with the blood. Uh, collected before antibiotic therapy for the blood culture that is most important one, most important one. Otherwise, the result will not be the same as the patient is feeling or facing. Maintain sterile collection matter to prevent contamination. Rejection, unlabeled or misidentified specimen should be re re rejected. So uh, we can't detect the patient and that creates misconceptions among the patients. Leaked or contaminated containers can be the source of infections to the others or the uh, laboratory persons. Insufficient sample volume. So that uh, should be rejected. Improper transport uh, conditions like blood culture refrigerated. So that is not uh, good. Hemolyzed, clotted or dried samples. That is again the rejection criteria. Collected after antibiotic if not a follow-up test. So that is the good. So that obviously gives the wrong result. Non-sterile collection leading to contaminations. That can uh, give the wrong results. So this is all about the how we will collect the specimens and what will be the conditions for uh, their storage. If you still have any question, you may ask in the comment section. Thank you so much.